This time on Chinivision, we look at the Amstrad computer user. Now, what you see on screen at the moment is, in fact, CPC 464 user, the official Amstrad Micro magazine. Official because it was published by Amstrad itself. We're going to look today at the first couple of years, certainly through to the end of 85 of Amstrad Computer User, and to see some of the issues, because this is a very interesting magazine. Because, in effect, Amstrad ended up running a national newsstand magazine of their own. They didn't go to some other company like Future Publishing or EMAP or Dennis or someone like that and say, hey, do you want to publish our official computer magazine? Do you want the rights to that? No. Amstrad Computer Magazine, for the first 50 or so issues of its life, was an Amstrad magazine published and produced from Amstrad's own headquarters in Brentwood. And this is so forgotten because the thing is, the winners write history. So when people talk about Amstrad Computer Magazines, they tend to talk about Amstrad Action, which was the last magazine standing, and indeed from 1991 onwards, or even 90 onwards, was the market leader. And it survived the longest, whereas Amstrad Computer User fell by the wayside. But in these early days, the first few years of the machine, this was the magazine for Amstrad users. It was given away to members of the Amstrad CPC Users Club initially, and then became a newsstand magazine. So this is the first issue, issue one, August, September 1984. It's not a monthly magazine yet, and well, what are you going to have on the cover other than Amstrad CPC 464? So let's have a look through the magazine. And yes, there's going to be lots of Amstrad adverts. They're not going to have much in the way of advertising sales at this time. And we see the contents. It's very short. We are not, not exactly a big magazine, but it's, again, at this stage, it's essentially free to Amstrad Computer Club members. So an editorial news and views of various bits of software. And please note, and you can see the address there, Brentwood House, 169 Kings Road, Brentwood. And the consultant editor is presumably someone brought in, Gareth Jefferson. And it's pretty much written and produced by Amstrad employees at this stage as well. And here we go. This is all, all about the launch of the CPC-464. CPC-464 launched in a blaze of publicity. Over 400 journalists packed into the Great Hall of London's Westminster School on April 10th and 11th to hear what Einstein, Ravel, Archimedes, <laughs> ironic, given Acorn, Launch a machine called the Archimedes. A few years later, Monet Shakespeare had to say at the new Amstrad personal computer. And of course, this was Nick Hewer's wheeze because he found people who shared the name of Einstein, Ravel, Archimedes, Monet, and Shakespeare. Hence why there's kids there all wearing rather cool Amstrad CPC 464 tops. And that, that kid there looks like he means business. I think he might have a, a job as a kind of a minder or something like that. God, these kids are going to be in their 50s by now, probably. Mid-40s, 50s. And we've got the first computers on sale at Rumbelows. Look at this. CPC 464s all stacked up, or monitors stacked up. 60 people queued for nearly an hour outside Rumbelows in Edgware Road, London, eagerly waiting to be the first owners of the CPC 464. This is the kind of photo Alan Sugar would adore and probably ordered as well. Machines stacked up in a high profile retailer ready to be bought with lots of punters queuing up. By 10.30, 100 computers have been sold and only a very few pieces of software remained. Customers have travelled from all over England and one gentleman even flew in from Bahrain with a specific purpose of collecting a CPC 464. Amstrad goes to school. The valiant performance of the CPC-464 is the Apple, again, Apple Archimedes, of Teacher's Eye in Thorpe Bay. Local school headmaster, Mr. Sanford, Mr. Sanford, had the foresight back in February this year to order 10 Amstrad computers. 
Now that's he's spending the local educational authorities' money on 10 computers that basically don't exist at a time where machines were, um, yeah, not turning up or companies were going bust. Oh, that'll be Dickie Mould. Yes, it is Dickie Mould. Amstrad sales director Dickie Mould provides a personal delivery service for the first CPC-464 systems. I mean, how, how Arthur Daly does this look? Just, just this is brilliant. This is this, just this guy turns up looking shifty with a load of machines that <laughs> stacked up outside. <laughs> like they can't fall off the back of a lorry. This is classic. Oh, this is classic Amstrad, really, isn't it? It's, uh, this is brilliant. So these were delivered on June the 18th. So again, the first batch of 464s. After a month of use and consistent daily hammering, Mr. Davis, the school's deputy headmaster, put it, both the school and its pupils were obviously highly delighted. And there we go. There's Dickie Mould again. Looking like a used car dealer. And uh, there's some kids playing on the CPCs there. Although what software they're using. Um, they must. Yeah, this is the problem really, isn't it? We buy machines this early. What exactly are you running on these machines? And how do you... Amstrad must have done them a deal. Amstrad must have done them a deal. Well, it's basically a sales brochure, really, this first issue with a few articles and things about games here. Oh, and, of course, yeah, Amstrad are going to review their own games. Yeah. So what we got here, we've got Ams Golf. Take heart, all you basic programmers. This machine... <laughs> oh, oh, you've heard of people plugging... You've heard of people plugging their games up all machine code. Or well, AMSGOLF by Computer Smiths. Take heart, all you basic programmers. This program was written entirely in Amstrad Basic, yet you would never have noticed if I hadn't told you. Chinny reckon. I've played AMSGOLF. Um, I reckon I would notice that was written entirely in Basic. And it, it's not, yeah. It, it's like a, a good quality typing game, and that's it, but... It's early days, but yeah, you've got Amstrad's official magazine reviewing its own software labels, games. Yeah. Even Ad this advert's brilliant. They're here. Printer cables for the CPC-464. <laughs> brilliant. Have a quick look at issue two. Issue two so it looks very similar to issue one. Except they've cunningly replaced the 464 on the cover with an Amstrad printer, because that's what they want to flog this month. And uh, the editor is now listed as William Pohl, who's the head of Amsoft. Production editor is Ivor Spittel, a long-term Amstrad employee. You see his name crop up in all sorts of places. I think he's right there till the Alan Sugar left, I believe, and perhaps afterwards as well. And the consultants are include Roland Perry, who, of course, is responsible for the 464. And we do have adverts. Comet are advertising there in the magazine, saying they've got software. And uh, what's this? Oh, it's Fly Past 737, the game that's so bad, I gave up trying to review it for Chinivision because I couldn't get the aircraft to take off. Because basically, it's like that game where you die, you die, you die, you die. Um, except written in basic and with an aircraft. And they're plugging their AMS... Is it AMS word they're plugging? Yep, that's that's good. I, Tas I didn't know Tasman Software wrote AMS word, so perhaps it's... Uh, could be related to TAS word then. Interesting. Never realised that. AMS off plugging jam in pipeline and poster paste. I never played poster paste. That's by Tasket set, isn't it? Interesting. Must check that out. The, four, six, the CPC 464 and Friends... Don't say Amstrad, say CPC 464. Right, what's this all about? It's got the Amsoft stand there at a computer show. What else, whatever else you do, don't call the CPC 464 the Amstrad. Bit late for that, guys. It's 2019 and people do call it the Amstrad. The number of references that are appearing describing this noble product in this way grows daily, along with the blood, along with the blood pressure of those who try hard to maintain the correct non-clementia. 
If Amstrad were to be contemplating a further computer product, I'm not saying it is, but it is, um, then what would that be called and how we'd all distinguish it from its predecessor? Yeah, I mean, why bang on about this when we're talking about a exhibition? Indeed, personal computer world show. So Amstrad is showing off their three-inch disk drive for the first time. And uh, Amstrad gave away 100,000 leaflets and 20,000 plastic carrier bags, which will keep White Hot awake all night, because that's 20,000 plastic carrier bags that are still not biodegraded, of course. What's going on with Alan Sugar on the left there? Right. You're never too old to start. What's an amazing woman, Miss Cecile Chaselin of Hovis, at 74 years of age, I'm almost certainly, well, will be dead now. She is probably our oldest computer user club member. Yet her dexterity and powers of programming have to be seen to be believed. One of the very first CPC 464 owners in the country, she bought a machine back in June from the Lion House in Brighton and has been a dedicated Amstrad fan ever since. I was firmly, con I was conf I was firmly convinced that the BBC was for me, she told Chairman Alan Sugar. But when I began to read the reports, I was forced to change my mind, and I'm glad that I did. My Amstrad gives me hours of pleasure and improves my hand-to-eye coordination. My favourite game is Electro Freddy, and I enjoy the chess game too. The forthcoming Star Watcher programme is definitely down on Miss Chaslin's list to buy. For as if computing wasn't enough, she's an ardent amateur astronomer, among her many other accomplishments. Yes, well... If anybody actually has time, to see if you can go on one of those sites that you can trace people who, who've died and what have you, and see if this lady actually existed, or if she's just a figment of Alan Sugar's imagination. That's convenient. This is convenient. She she bought her computer from Lionhouse. And what do we have here? An advert for Lionhouse. Gosh. You know, it's just as well I completely trust Amstrad and everything they ever do because they're so honest and they would never, never put up a picture of an old lady and then invent a story and stick it next to it, would they? Amstrad, Amstrad would never, ever do that. Oh, what's this? Personalised handmade jumpers to order. Select your favourite character from any Amsoft game to feature on a truly unique jumper. Any orders considered? Well, oh, this is an advert. This is an advert that comes up in all the uh, magazines for years. Win the pools with the Amstrad CPC 464. It's a database thing, isn't it, really? And the news section is basically Amstrad puffery. And they've, oh, they've got a chart from Computer Choice where they rate the machines against other machines. A review of Flight Path 737 basically says... It's well worth the reasonable six ninety five being charged by Anirog. It's a terrible, terrible, bugged abomination of a game. Its only notable point is a how well two notable points in fact is a how bad it is and b it's the first flight sim for the CPC four six four. More reviews, lots of Roland games being reviewed. And a selection of screens from Roland in Time as well here. I want to issue three, and it's this is the January February 1985 edition. Yep, it's a 464 with disk drives on the front, but there's an important thing going on here because, and, and there's a lovely picture of Dicky Mould. Before we go any further, handing a uh, some prizes over to a member of the Bee Gees, and uh, it's a check, but then they've deducted the DMP1 and DD1. He also bought from Amstrad, probably at full retail price. Interesting thing happens though in issue three, and this is the only thing I'm going to look at in this issue, is that you suddenly see the name Simon Rockman pop up here as the editor rather than William Pohl. Simon Rockman is a professional journalist who's come to work for Amstrad to edit Amstrad Computer User. And he stays with the magazine right the way through to about issue 50 when Amstrad sell the magazine to Robert Maxwell, I think it was, and uh, before he fell off that boat and all that unfortunate business with the pension money. But um, important note there because you're finally seeing this magazine becoming more professional 
as it heads towards newsstands and isn't just a user club magazine. We move on to May 1985, and yeah, it's the CPC on the cover, but it's a new one. It's the CPC 664. And look, we've got over 100 pages already. How many were in that first issue? About 30. And now we're starting to look like a more professional magazine with lots of articles and things going on. And we've actually got a proper news section now as well, not just a puff, load of puff pieces for Amstrad because things are starting to happen for the CPC software is out there. The machine was announced a year ago, but of course it takes time for a machine to establish itself and everyone to get behind it if things start coming out. So we've got news of the Maxim Assembler on ROM, we've got Jet Set Willy coming out, and Ultimate are throwing their weight behind the CPC. And we've got also got news of the magazine's name changing to Amstrad computer user uh, ironic really because if you remember back in that first edition amstrad were complaining that we should call the machine the cpc 464 not the amstrad and yet we're changing the name of the magazine from cpc 464 user to amstrad computer user this yeah don't don't overthink that one and one of the hallmarks of the simon rockman era of amstrad computer user is he would go and visit software developers and interview them, software publishers, and get behind the scenes photos and talk about their current games and what's going to be happening, uh, which gave you a nice insight into the industry. And we've got a nice one here with Virgin Games as well, not to be confused with Electronic Dreams because the, of the headline, but no, it's Virgin, and they're talking all about sorcery. And just to cause mischief, there is a big advert for Ocean in the middle of the article as well. And one of the things they talk about is how the games are developed, because even at this stage, some people develop games on different systems. And Virgin, uh, one of the few software houses, do all the work on the machine the program has to run on. So Sorcery is all working on the Amstrad CPC, and developed on Dev Pack 2. Do what future projects, including Strange Loop. And conveniently, uh, there's an advert for Dev Pack just on the next page as well. Garwood is growing, and you can reap the benefit. Bigger stocks, cheaper prices, and an interesting look at floppy disk prices in May 1985. And we've got five and a quarter inch, eight inch, three inch, and three and a half inch discs. So the top spec, five and a quarter inch disc is going to cost you £31.80. Is that for 10? Yes. £31.80 for 10 for five and a quarter. Eight inch, which are pretty much obsolete, are going to cost you 30 quid as well. Box of 10 three inch discs is going to cost you £36. That's not too bad. Okay, they are 40 tracks, not 80 tracks, so even so, that's not hideously bad. And actually, three and a half inch are going to cost you £41.80 or £39, no, £41.80, sorry. £41.80 for three and a half inch or £36 for three inch. Feature on Prestel. Again, it, it, Amstrad Computer User was very, very diverse. People tend to think of magazines like Crash and Zap, which were all games. And you had Amtix briefly on the Amstrad CPC as well, which is all games. The CPC is an all-round computer. I know the C64 and Spectrum can do this stuff, but the market on those machines moved completely towards games. And at this time, the CPC was an all-round computer. Even in later days, Amstrad Action had a good balance between serious and games. And now we come to the review of the CPC 464. Scoop, screams the magazine. Um, well, yeah, it's your magazine, it's your computer, it's you're going to be the first people to have your hands on it. 
obviously, and no one's going to say a bad word at all, are they? Especially when it's Ivor Spittel reviewing it, who was probably involved in the development in some capacity. We don't want to make a big thing of this product, said Amstrad's chairman, Alan Sugar. Too right, Al. You're going to have the 6128 out in a few months. He went on to hit darkly that the excitement of Big Gun should be saved much later in the year, since 664 was a logical consolidation of the 464 and DD1. That's interesting. That's really, really interesting that Amstrad potentially always intended for the 664 to be a stopgap. And I, I always knew, and it's always been known, the 6128 was in development much earlier than people perhaps thought it was, but it was going to be an American-only machine. But yeah, that's um, that's peculiar. At this stage, perhaps Amstrad have already decided that RAM is so cheap that we're going to do the 6128 in a few months. We just need to get these machines out. Incidentally, 664s are incredibly collectible and are as rare as hen's teeth. When people say on eBay they are rare, they really are. I think it's about 60,000 made. The 664, of course, with its MSX-style cursor keys. It's rather chunky, ugly almost. Look, it's not as sleek as a 6128. It looks like a... It's not even nice as a 464, really. I've never seen one in person. I know that sounds ridiculous for someone like me to say that, a CPC, long-term CPC owner and a fan... But really, these things are genuinely rare, and I never saw one of them back in the day. I've not seen one in real life. I've only ever seen pictures, and every time I look at a picture, I go, mm, that's not particularly good looking, is it? There you go. Amstrad themselves recognising the cursor cluster has overtones of the MSX. After a year of using cassettes, it was such a pleasure to enjoy the speed and convenience of built-in disk drive and the programs loaded are taking a fraction of a set of a time the cassette tape takes we've got new features in amstrad basic because it's basic 1.1 and it the article details all that oh and disking computers i used to buy stuff from disking computers and they've got Amstrad floppy disks for £39.90, excluding VAT. So that's £45, including VAT. I don't know whether other advert included or excluded VAT. What if they're still going? And Amsoft, of course, have plenty of software out on floppy disk. Most of it quite poor quality. Conclusions. If the CPC-464 is good, and most agree it is, well, yes, you're an official Amstrad publication, then the CPC-664 is on safe ground. It's a 464 with built-in disk and some extra wheezes in the basic. And we've got some adverts on the back pages or towards the back pages, hardware products from Northern Computers. They're an educational uh, distributor. And they've got an Amstrad education scheme which includes a one-year free hardware service contract, educational software lists for schools, languages and utilities, future project, project information, and 12 free software cassettes. And then Frodsham near Chester, where Bob Calgis has his candle shop. Uh, oh, ho, ho, hang on, hang on. Oh, ho, ho. Cascade, advertising for games, top prices and royalties, Paid for top quality games written in machine code or basic for MSX, Amstrad, CPC 464, CBM 64 and 16, Commodore 16. Games for other computers considered for immediate evaluation. Send your tape to Cascade Games. Why could Cascade be wanting games being sent to them? I can't think, can I? I can think of 50 reasons why they want lots of games sent to them. And indeed, they pretty much published everything they got sent. Quickly forward to June. Because we've got a famous image here. Oh yeah. 664, a success. And there he is, smiling, uh, using a computer from the wrong angle. That's not how you use a computer, Alan. You uh, face the other way 
and uh, look at the screen. But hey, he's Alan Sugar. He owns the lot, so he gets to do what he likes. Amstad user was very lucky to have a scoop on the 664 last month. And uh, we've got some details. Oh, we've got some details here of stats to do with Amstrad. 44% of Amstrad business, audio and computers, is overseas. Amstrad wants to sell 600,000 computers in 1985. Due to mis mistakes on software houses, not all 464 software will run on the new machine or new ROM. That's, a, that's not an Amstrad fact. Amstrad are looking into the possibility of producing a computer with an integrated modem. CD Player announced this year, 464 will not be dropped. We're not cutting the price of the 464. Amstrad will launch compilation. Amsoft will launch compilation discs. And we're going to have an Amstrad official chart as well for software. Here we go. This is the official first Gallup software chart for the CPC. And we've got Amsoft titles in there as well. Centre Court is at 20. Chucky Egg 19. Combat Licks 18. 17 Wild Bunch, 16 Flight Pass, 737, 15 Defend or Die, 14 World Cup by Arctic, <laughs> uh, Android 1 by Vortex 13, Pajama Rama 12, 11th Manic Minor, 10 Ghostbusters, 9 Emerald Island Adventure Game, and 9 Technician Ted. That was by Houston, was it? I'm sure that wasn't by Houston. It must be. At 8, um, 7 Steve Davis Snooker, 6 Mr. Freeze, 5 Mini Office. Because it's a software chart, not a games chart. A mini office stayed in the chart for ages. Um, Dark Star at four, Fighter Pilot at three, Jet Set Willy at two, Sorcery at number one. And it shows you the relative market strength. So number one is 100. Number two, 65 in relative terms. And we go down to seven at the bottom. So that's a nice little uh, snapshot of Amstrad CPC software. Uh, for the for mid-April... March to April 85. So we go to August 85, and yeah, lots of nice graphics on the front here. And CPC 628 first report. Hang on. That's not a way to announce a new machine unless they've got no news about it. Right, uh, where do we go? New Amstrad computer launched in America, and yeah, over here very quickly. Indescomp of Chicago to be the first people to sell a new Amstrad computer. The CPC 618 will cost $799 for the colour version and $699 for a green screen version. That's an interesting car price difference considering the... Yeah. Um, Amstrad Computer User hopes to have a full review of this exciting new development in the near future. Watch your space. I should hope so. Oh, hang on. We've got... Here we are in October. 628's released and the 8256. Two new computers from Amstrad. Reviewed by David Ward, the 256. That name rings a bell. Can't think why. So, yeah, I've got a view of the 8256 here. And this eventually will result in a business section of the magazine being created for PCW and PC users. And then those split magazines splitting out into Amstrad business computing. With the magazine also being more popular now as well and having lots of adverts in it, lots of colour as well, lots of colour pages in the magazine. Including this review of a light pen, which is one of the most useless devices ever because, well, yeah, I mean, drawing on the screen, this... Hmm. Good for cheating at light gun games, though. CPC 6128 Andrew Clark reviews the third Amstrad computer. So here we go. This is the 6128. Um, again, 664 days are completely and utterly finished. And it says all the stuff you'd expect it to say. It's not going to be... Well, it's it's a sales pitch, really, isn't it? They're not going to criticise anything about it at all. And they're going to say how much better it is than all of the competition. Little advert for Evesham Micros there with three inch discs on sale, four twenty five each, ten for forty pounds. Is it meal prices creeping up? Not many magazines have adverts for their competitors, but um CPC Computing, which is a, to be fair, a tape magazine, is advertising 
in the back of this issue and you can win an Austrian Metro uh, otherwise known as a load of rust uh, with this month's issue it's worth five and a half thousand pounds competition closes 30th November 1985 it's available from Dove Smith, John Menzies and leading news agents Argos Tape Magazines 64 Tape Computing Infinite Limited Times House The Marlows and Hemel Hempstead and they had some good software on them actually but um yeah didn't like that idea didn't last long and we've now got the least significant bit a fixture of Amstrad computer user for quite a few years um with a bit more of a sartorial edge on the whole Amstrad thing usually sometimes with little bits of gossip and stuff in there and uh making kind of a bit more of a stab at competitors and stuff like that it's quite an amusing little column that they have here and they're talking about word star on the 6128 for under 500 pounds because of course the big thing about 6128 is it can run cpm plus therefore it can run word star and therefore you've got a full uh professional system for i say under 500 pounds once you bought the software as well Final issue on this roundup we're looking at today is the December 1985 edition with a big Amstrad cake on the front. Doesn't it look good? Well, perhaps not by modern cake standards, but by 1985 cake standards, that looks pretty special. It's got a mouse on it as well, an AMX mouse. Game of the Month is unsurprisingly an Amstrad publication. Oh, and adverts for the AMX mouse as well. And that lovely, uh, you used to see this lovely image of the mouse in action there. Well, that has that weird buttons at the bottom thing going on with it. And I mean, yeah, it's, I found that a bit weird. Was it meant to be around the other way? Three buttons? I don't know. Also, never knew why anybody who actually had one. And at £69 each, you can probably guess why. And we're now getting Amstrad Business Computing in here as well, a pull-out section in the middle dedicated towards business applications. And you've got the Amstrad Computer Show, a computer show dedicated just to Amstrad. Imagine how wonderful that would be. No smelly Commodore 64 and Spectrum owners around the place. No BBC Micro owners in their Anamax. Just Amstrad owners in, uh, in a space. Just Yeah, that sounds fantastic to me. And 9,832 people attended the show. That said, um, okay, it's the Amstrad Computer Show. Is this probably in a warehouse somewhere? And it's the uh, in the Novotel. So it's kind of one of those big rooms, I guess. And lots of Amstrad things on sale. And, yeah, there's people selling all sorts of things. Amsnet service being demonstrated. And uh, 9,832 people attended the show. And also got record profits for Amstrad, 122% on 1984 increase, 20.1 million pounds. And that, of course, is just on the other stuff they sell and the 464, because it's going to be, well, the 664 will have had some impact, but the new machines have only just come out. And Sage are launching their software packages on the CPC to run under CPM and PCW as well for £99 you get a system to cope with fully automatic sales and nominal and purchase ledgers and Sage payroll as well for £69.99 and Sabre Wolf is coming out and we've got the 6128 adverts now as well 664 has been forgotten about and the software you can get on it's a 3D Stunt Rider for $12.95 on disc, 3D Grand Prix for $13.95 on disc. So I'm um, so wanting to push the prices up of software where they can. Southern Bell's out as well. Choo choo, Mr. PSB. Choo choo. Details of how the CPC 6128 advert was made as well. Some photos there behind the scenes. 
and all shot on 35mm film as well. Rather, I do like this about Simon Rockman editing Amstrad computer user, actually. He doesn't tend to sub the copy too much if he disagrees with something. He does put a genuine editor comment in there. So what you've got is Amstrad is the first company to advertise software on TV in a sizable campaign. Then brackets Ocean, question mark, Virgin, question mark, Global, question mark, ED. So it's kind of like, I'll let you say that, but I am going to correct you. It's a little bit of a hallmark of how he edits the magazine. It's quite nice, actually. And you'll have heard me mention Splatch on Cinevision before. It's a really good Boulder Dash clone with rabbits and looks very polished. And I've always said it's a typing, and indeed it is. And it was a typing over several issues of, or two or three issues of Amstrad Computer User with a lot of data statements because basically it's machine code, but you can type it in on basic. So... Let me zoom in there. Look at look at all that. Imagine the joy of typing in line 8490. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 256. Next one, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 256. And the David, my dad's mate, did type all this in and gave it to me. So fair dues to him. But just a whole pay pages of data statements to type in. Okay, you've got a nearly commercial quote, well, actually probably better than some commercial games. But um yeah, that's a that's a type in and a half. And that's over as say two or three issues. Just just imagine. Just imagine typing and then when it's nearer. Check something that lot. Oh dear. Is there more? There's more. There's more. <laughs> Just oh, oh! This is there's even more. There's more. There's more. It goes on forever. No, no, no. There's <laughs> oh, <laughs> even they have put in at the end of the article the Amstrad computer user logo and then three exclamation marks. Oh, just imagine if there's an error in that listing. So the games reviews, which should be somewhere down here, because they've upped their game with the games reviews now. You've got proper pages for each game, although they're going to give that a top mark. Oh, it's a nine. What's that got over top? We've got graphics, first impression, sound, lasting impression, polish and value, and all scores out of 20. No overall score. 3D Grand Prix is quite good. I would argue those scores are very generous, but it's an Amstar magazine. Regular doesn't get a high score, but then it isn't an Amsoft game, so it doesn't even get a full page pause by Arctic. Highway Encounter, arguably a far better game than 3D Grand Prix, but getting, mm, yeah, about the same score. Covenant, oh, I haven't played Covenant for years. And Sorcery Plus is being advertised now, presented by Amsoft. Well, here it is, the follow-up to the best-selling Amstoff game, Sorcery. We put it on disc, added many more colourful locations. This is the scroller from the game. The scroller from the game, they're using that in the advert. 13.95, superb game. Jonah Barrington Squash, got that on budget. Not a superb game. Raid over Moscow. Takes time to master, that's a understatement. Devil's Crown only gets half a page there. Good game, good value for money. It is a good game. A bit dated, but a good game, certainly a good game at the time. Jugger what's Juggernaut? Oh, you drive a lorry. This is a game we need to investigate. I've already decided by looking at this. This is Juggernaut is a game we need to investigate. And that's Amstrad Computer User up to the end of 1985. Well done if you've stuck with this. And hopefully it's a little bit of an insight into what was a very significant magazine in the early years of the CPC's life. And at some point in the future, we'll look at 1986, 87, and perhaps 1988 as well. But hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>